Even in a secular age resigned to money and materialism, there remains hidden within this very resignation the heart of a renewed spiritual life. The modern soul may be materialistic, unwilling and unable to conceive of realities inaccessible to the bodily senses and immeasurable by scientific methods. But the soul's repeated hedonistic binges on temporary pleasures have left only sickness. Its pursuits of technical power over life only deep wounds. And its hopes for complete knowledge of a clockwork universe devoid of divinity have been dashed by the epistemic revolutions in 20th century natural science, in response to which physicist Niels Bohr once remarked, that it is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. Physics concerns what we say about nature. We have found, according to another great physicist of the same era, Sir Arthur Eddington, that where science has progressed the farthest, the mind has but regained from nature that which the mind put into nature. The modern materialistic soul has come to feel trapped behind its own beliefs about nature. Alienated from the very physical world that once liberated it from the superstitions of the ancient past. The limits of the brain and body trouble the soul because they do not satisfy the deep longing it feels for truth and goodness. The body cannot satisfy the soul because the soul is not of the body. Its longing is possible only because the soul remembers its spiritual origin and desires to shine more fully in its light. We need look no further than to the discouragement of our own conscience in response to the mess we've made of the earth to find evidence of a more perfect order underlying the evolution of the manifest world. We feel we have sinned, that we have failed to allow for the full blossoming of our spiritual potential, only because we, however nascently, know this potential lies dormant within us. However dimly the warmth of the light of eternity is felt within the souls of those alive in our age, the flame is kindled still, awaiting the metanoia we so sorely seek.